Welcome to the Dead Horse Podcast for this week. Uh, I have Vivek. Hey guys. Rashi. Hi. And uh, I and he's currently playing FTL, but he stages, I guess. Yeah, I'm somewhat here. I'm just kind of, you know, listening in, providing some moral support <laughs> to the podcast. But generally, I'm going to be focusing on my cruising. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So the big news of this uh, past week was. uh watch dogs which is uh an ubisoft game i guess so i'm the uh, only one who's actually finished the entire game okay well yeah. i won't say entire game but yeah the story part yeah i mean i haven't even played it except <laughs> so yeah. yeah yeah same here so well done yeah yeah <laughs> achievement unlocked <laughs> so well the game is um is good but they could have done better with it i mean it's it gets disappointing afterwards i don't know uh it gets pretty repetitive uh hacking is fun initially you know like you can hack into cameras and then you can hack into certain uh obstacles which can you know distract the enemies around you uh so yeah. that's mostly what you can do with the hacking thing i was pretty surprised when i when i saw and this guy was just making cars explode with his phone like like how do you do yeah. that yeah yeah like so basically all over the world you know there are certain things which you can okay. hack into and they they do certain things like uh you basically have to level up for these things so once you purchase a steam uh something a uh, steam burst i think or whatever so basically uh, uh, in in the roads you know inside the roads there are these steam pipes which you can make uh, burst so okay. i guess that's what he, d- he did a car is driving over a steam pipe and you make it burst the yeah so the yeah exactly so there's a huge hole in the road and everything or you can you know stick a bomb to the car and make it explode whatever okay. so i, I mean the car chases a... the car yeah. chases are fun but oh my god the the way the car handles is absolutely terrible <laughs> i had such a hard time you know tra- traveling by car bikes and boats yeah. are better <laughs> Yeah that's pretty weird because the car handling has been criticized across the board like usually people are, some people are favorable some people are uh, it's, like it's absolutely shitty you know, no matter what car you get oh my god it's so bad <laughs> i mean you know what game has good driving sleeping dogs yeah yes. that's that's okay. yeah. watch dogs is the second best game with dogs in the name yeah. then ten dogs is probably the best game with dogs in the name but the second best open world game with dogs <laughs> watchdogs yeah yeah let's Wait, start with watchdogs more qualifiers here yeah. second best is watchdogs the best is sleeping dogs open world games oh, with dogs in the oh, names oh okay okay <laughs> got gotcha, gotcha. yeah. <laughs> agreed agreed because you know in case we missed it vivek actually worked on that game just just in case anyone yeah. missed it thanks guys you know, yeah. it is yeah. very subtle he's been trying to downplay <laughs> shameless it shameless promotion i think it's about time <laughs> did anyone yeah. know that i worked on that Uh, yeah. Guys, really? you yes. did? Holy shit! Yeah. Wow! Who oh my that? god! Yeah. Sleeping dogs. Yeah, Vivek was the person in charge of the karaoke mini game, so like blame blame that on him. Yeah. Oh All the god, good yes, parts. Totally, totally like kill somebody. What? Sleeping dogs is a fantastic open world experience set in the city of Hong Kong. The player ha- has the ability. to do really cool martial arts action moves and the combat focuses on hand to hand combat as opposed to gun fights it's a much better game than certain other games that have dogs in the name that have released this last week <laughs> just saying so <laughs> if you want to go to like a new location and don't want to play a regular white hero maybe you should check out sleeping dogs just saying yeah. it also has a really fat- fantastic gun tutorial mission <laughs> 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 So agreed. I mean, Sleeping yeah. Dogs was much better, and I mean, I had a lot of fun playing Sleeping Dogs. So Watch Dogs yeah. is, and I mean, the story was yeah. bland, and uh, the character is okay. He's better than Connor from Assassin's Creed Three. <laughs> oh, that's that's But... a very high bar that you've set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't stop hating on that guy. It's he's he's yeah. more boring than a sack of potatoes. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh hey, come on! Don't hate on potatoes like that. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm complimenting potatoes here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So in any case, uh, Ubisoft really needs to work on how they design teeth. I mean, teeth are be- terrible. <laughs> you know, most of the models over there were like with bad teeth. So, like, how is the story? Was it engaging? Were you engaged beginning to end with the story of Watch Dogs? Mm-hmm. No, not engaging at all. Oh wow! And and you know, in the middle, it gets pretty. It it gets like a sob story, which turned into a snore fest. So oh. it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> The only you know, time I actually enjoyed it was when he gets uh, tased. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. You really did not like this main character. Yeah. That, that part yeah. was fun. So, so like, uh, if you didn't like the story, the reason for progressing through the game was, like, the gameplay was fun. For a while, at least. For a while, yes. I mean, it, okay. it's a lot of, I mean, it's fun, yes. I mean... Yeah, it gets repetitive after after a while, and once the helicopters start coming, and you know that that's when it gets really bad <laughs> because the helicopters won't leave you. Yeah. Mm. So, so overall, like, they could have done much better with the game. Definitely. Um, yeah. I don't know. I didn't enjoy are, it that much. Like, are there any moments in the open world that stood out to you that you thought, "Oh, this is kind of awesome"? Only when I was uh, on a motorboat, in, you know, riding through the waves in the rain. That. They already made a game with better boating stuff in it. Like that, it's called Black Flag. Uh, I'm hundred percent certain the the driving like sh- the ship in the rain, Black Flag probably better than that. But okay, what about the combat? Is the combat fun? Like the hand to hand stuff? You have a stick that you can beat people with. Yeah, that's that. Uh, it's just a like quick time event kind of a thing where you just press F and then he just you know beats the guy into pulp. That's it. It's it's similar to Deus Ex Human Revolution, I guess, in that you just press E and E does the takedown thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, though, though I will say that um, if you take the game slow, you know, like if you opt for stealth, it's a little fun, you know, it's it's fun that way, taking down enemies, but it takes a lot of time to do, to do that. I mean, you can you can choose to be Rambo or you can choose to like hack everything and, you know, just make them go crazy, uh, the enemies go crazy by bursting pipes and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that part is fun. Because... Yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, because I haven't played the game anyway. No, like uh, just that's what I'm saying. That it's fun initially, and then you know, I mean, every single mission is the same thing. You know, you just infiltrate wherever you have to go, uh, do whatever you want to, go Rambo or not. Stay, you know, just sneak your way around, um, hack into whatever mystery you want to solve, and then basically just get out of the run out of the, that particular area. So, it. I mean, every mission is like that. There's not even a single mission that is separate. That's something different, you know. Yeah, that's that's sad to hear, I guess, because. Yeah. Yeah, because I I have a feeling like which we also discussed earlier, which I'm not sure if is recorded in podcast or not. That this game was initially like pitched as a hacker style game. But then it seemed like all this open world stuff was just so, added you know to what, it. You know what hacking yeah. you can do? You, it's basically like you're walking on the street, okay? And you can hack into other people's phones and basically uh, take out money from their phones. So you're walking on the street and you've, uh, you know, you open a profiler thing which basically yeah. tells you what the other person is. So you mm-hmm. can just hack them and uh, find an ATM, withdraw their cash, stuff like that. Oh. That's the only hacking you do. Oh, but yeah. that's I mean, I, I've stolen money from yeah. people who are, uh, you know, cancer patients and stuff like that. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I mean, like these, like I, I think but that's just randomly generated. Dying, like right? I don't think they, yeah, they don't simulate the entire city. I guess where it's like a, that would be too much. I guess it's probably randomly. Ge- but but yeah, like it's. Yeah, I guess things like these are kind of, uh, like, they kind of lose their impact if you do it too much. For example, if you just have a constant array of randomly generated people, so then after a while, like, whether it's randomly generated cancer patient or randomly generated, like, it is start you know, some... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then they lose their impact, kind of. Yeah, it probably does. I think this is one place where procedural generation often, uh, like, harms the intended idea. Because I I can imagine like the developers being like okay this is a great model dilemma do you steal from a cancer patient etc cetera, etc cetera. but then there is like five cancer patients on the same road and <laughs> so that that becomes kind of weird. I think I think the way to make this more interesting would be to limit the play space 
So if you have a smaller play space, you can have yeah. a greater variety of content that probably won't repeat as much. Yeah, because yeah, sure. you, have, you have fewer number of people and each person will feel like a unique human being. Mm. Yeah. This so reminds me of that, that. Uh, consortium. Didn't that have a similar concept to this? Like, like yeah, there was a game called, yeah. Is consortium the game in set in an aeroplane? It's set in a spaceship, Mass Effect type spaceship. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, know like, what, I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yes, here we play a game, a uh, guy called Rook 64 or something. Yeah. Uh, and you're in a game of some sort, like if there's a meta narrative going on. Yeah. Wow, that sounds familiar. Meta narrative, yeah, to this thing. But, but, <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, uh, so yeah, this is a kind of uh, which I think Vivek and I are referencing is the city block concept that I think Warren Spector talked about a bit. Yeah. Where like his was like you model just a, a single city block and all the people in it. And then you examine what happens then instead of a huge city or a like, you know, yeah. Grand Theft Auto 5 style, just like a huge where like nobody individually matters because they're all random mm. and they'll like be deleted as soon as they like walk off the screen. Yeah. Um, so Rashi, uh, what other stuff can you do? Like, for example, you mentioned stealing from ATMs. Then there was this uh, exploding uh, pipe. Yeah, you can steel. you can listen into yeah. conversations uh, between people, and if there are criminal intentions there, you can tell that person and you know help him mm -hmm. out if he's the victim, or basically stop him if he's the perpetrator. So, <laughs> Personal yeah. interest. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> Totally. See, that's what I was hoping this game would be. When it said that the player character is called a vigilante, I thought the idea was this is going to be person of interest. You are in a city and you have decided to like help people out, and it turns yeah, out so to, like, you, you do different... help people out. You do help the people out like this in this way. There are certain uh, criminal activities that happen, and you have to stop the uh, stop the person from attacking the other person, and you know all that stuff. You get bonus points if the if both the people are alive. Uh, so stuff like that. Yeah. That's interesting. Like, I think, I don't know, I think if this game was structured more like Batman, where the city is an open city where there are, like, separate gangs and you have to shut down it, each gang. Actually, it sort of is, but it's not really in your face kind of a thing. It, they're, they're side missions. And like I said before, I haven't really done the side missions. I'm mostly concentrated on the story only. Okay. Uh, yeah, so. It could be interesting. Uh, I will check it out at some point in time when I have time to check. It yeah, out. like it's it's something I would suggest let it go on sale first and then buy the game. It's not worth oh. spending, or you know the entire. Yeah, and, month and it launched in a really like bad state, like lots of crashes and stuff. I, I think you also had problems with it, right? Yeah, but uh, I actually uh, asked a few people and they said that I had to update my graphic card drivers, which I hadn't since March. So that's the only problem oh. that I faced. Okay. Huh. Yeah, though, yeah, this just makes me like the whole graphics card situation makes me so uh, like it's kind of like it in this industry it happens in reverse. Like you have these graphic card drivers with workarounds for each game. So like ideally there should be a single spec and the developers bug test their games against their spec. But in this uh, driver situation, like like right now you have like I bet like three, out of like let's say the 300 MB NVIDIA driver. There's probably like 200 MBs just of workarounds of all the history of big budget games. Because every game happens and this happens all the time. So that mm. just kind of like, <laughs> it's very, like as a developer, In fact, you I was reading certain, uh, I was reading some comments, you know, on uh, IVG, Indian Video Gamer forums. And people are like, you know, they were posting comments about how some person actually, some person or people, uh, they made a better looking uh, mod. Uh, which makes the uh, whole Watch Dogs game look even better than, you know, how it is. And it's kind of sad. I mean, those guys were promising such nice graphics and stuff like that. And they, they, here yeah. comes a person who made better stuff than they could probably have. So, I don't know. I mean, yeah. the hell are they doing? <laughs> I think it's a case of uh, them aiming for, again, like, consoles as the lead platforms. And then, it's... like, the PC version is just a straight port. Like, PC yeah. master race. <laughs> I think, the, I think yeah. the other part is that, uh, like, I think as soon as the this game had like the phenomenal reception that it got from the E3 thing that they did, 
I think they in the Ubisoft said this this game became a competitor to Grand Theft Auto, and they want to they they want to set up Watch Dogs directly against Grand Theft Auto. I don't know how smart a move that is in the long run, but at least in the short term, it seems to have paid off. This is one of their top selling titles of all time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, because, because, I actually, yeah, I don't know, I enjoyed it more than Grand Theft Auto. Though the only thing I missed in uh, in this game was, I mean, GTA has much better car control and, you know, the radio and stuff is hilarious in GTA. I mean, I miss the humor, basically. It's it's, a, it's not that humorous, uh, the game, yep. so. Yeah. Uh, I was actually, but, yeah, looking at the, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you see. Uh, well, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was actually looking at the Bunny Hop review and he mentioned that the stealth missions have much in common with, uh, like, the, like, uh, with Deus Ex Human Revolution and that you had the stealth thing and your takedown move was similar and you could, could uh, at certain points, have actually, stuff and I they were like, played, oh. I haven't played Human Revolution, so I really can't say. It, oh. it might be the case. It might be the case. You're missing out, yeah. like Human Revolution is pretty good, but yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm missing out on a lot of yeah. games. <laughs> yeah. Human Revolution is pretty good. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm just too lazy uh, to download all that. I have the game, I'm just too lazy to download it. Tejas, oh. how's your stupid FTL game going? <laughs> it's <so> amazing. <laughs> You're not dead yet? Nope. I'm actually doing pretty good. Oh, motherfucker. Man. As soon as I say that. Yes! Yeah, Alright, nice. ladies and gentlemen, this week's Teja Souza appearance was brought to you by Faster Than Light. Faster Than Light. Killing Teja Souza since it released. <laughs> right. Back to Arvin. Doing what all of us wish we could do, like, at this okay. moment. Too far, man. Too far. Uh, Wait, what? You don't know you could, like, leave just on a, like, leaking space? So he slowly gets admits uh, to death, like nobody. No. No. Uh, sure. Yeah, no, no one. <laughs> like, sorry, man. you're you're on your own there. Okay. Uh, okay. You want to uh, other game maybe or time plate? Like, I forgot which game you were supposed to talk about. Uh, Rashi, you're also playing Uncharted: Golden Abyss, right? Oh yeah, I actually one of my friends has lent me his Vita, his Vita for a month or so. Okay. He's busy playing Dota, so yeah. Uh, so I've been playing Uncharted, Golden Abyss, uh, Muramasa as well, and uh, Persona 4. So, okay, Persona 4 is the one I want to talk about. How is Persona 4? Uh, I haven't really uh, played a lot of it, but I am thoroughly enjoying the game. Uh, it's built up this mystery very well, you know. Uh, I mean, I don't want to put the game down. I want to know what happens. And it's a lot of fun. Yep. And uh, is, like, does Uncharted feel like it does on the PS3 on the Vita or it plays no. different? <laughs> no. Actually, um, it's a lot easier to play on Vita for some reason. Uh, mostly because of the touch controls and stuff, perhaps. Uh, but it's not as, as gorgeous as it is in, on the PS3. Okay. Yeah, obviously, obviously, it's PS3 and this is a Vita. Uh, but somehow, uh, for me, Golden Abyss is not as captivating as Among Thieves was. All right. Is it like narratively or just in terms of gameplay? Uh, in terms of story, uh, gameplay is pretty similar to uh, uh, Among Thieves and all that. Though I do, I I am enjoying PS Vita version a lot. I mean, you can you can basically you know paint where you want to go. Uh, paint the path for Nathan Drake to go wherever you want to, stuff like that. That's a lot of fun. Sounds interesting. Uh, you're playing Muramasa on the PS Vita or you're playing that on... Uh... Uh, on the Vita. I played Muramasa on the V as well initially. Um, one of my friends uh, made me play it and I found the V controls to be much better than the Vita controls, but I'm having fun nonetheless. Uh, Monomasa is beautifully uh, painted. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. I, I always enjoy games which have good artwork. Transistor is one of them. Monomasa is one of them. Uh, Bastion, I haven't completed the game, but Bastion was still that way. So. 
All right. Uh, Arvind, are you there? Hello. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I heard okay. all of that. All right. Uh, so, uh, like, I've been playing uh, Thomas was alone. Have you finished that, right? Yeah. All right. So I am. I, I don't know. I got to a point where the narrative became irritating and the puzzle also became irritating. So I'm on the verge of quitting. Like, what was your at that point? Uh, like, I uh, left the game for like pretty much like one month at the point where the water is constantly rising, and you are that. a uh, tall cube which can jump really high i don't even remember the name but uh like it's it's that kind of game which i remember that okay i enjoyed playing it but i can't tell you anything about it right now like i don't even remember anyone else's names except like the thomas guy because that's kind I, of the I, name i do not remember the name of the other shapes i know thomas is a red rectangle uh and yeah. i know that there are other characters in there and like the the voice over is starting to get grating it's getting on my nerves now you know the like the overt earnestness and the excessive britishness of that narrative is getting boring mm. uh, isn't it that guy who played uh, the snarky british guy in assassin's creed 2 is it the same guy because it that feels guy, like the same guy to me he has like, he has an extraordinarily pleasant voice but my yeah. god it's uh, it's getting really like It's getting really irritating to hear his voice go on the same way again and again. Like I, unless there's some big like twist coming where he's I don't know. Like unless yeah, well, if some... I tell you the twist, you will probably roll your eyes. So it's better that you play it and experience it for yourself. Okay. But. Uh, but yeah, like I mean, it's a good game, I guess. Like I enjoyed the time I spent with it, but I really can't tell you. like because i don't remember like it's not like something which like stuck in my head since since then because it's almost been an year or so i think since i played it there are some interesting puzzles but i don't know it's it is not a game that i would play for the mechanics they i mean at this point and i am not overly enamored with that narrative that that it's going to make me come back to it for Like I don't know. Uh, Thomas is alone in the game in which you play a red rectangle that can jump around a lot. And as you, like it's it's a platforming game. And as you go through the game, you meet other shapes, and each of the shapes uh, basically has its own particular yeah. set of skills that helps you navigate. They have their through. own yeah. They have their own uh, kind of story as well. Though, like it's it's like that where uh, like what what I like ab- about that game is that. Uh, it makes you sort of imagine stuff because uh like what what's actually happening on screen is entirely different from what's being narrated to you so like somebody like is like i think one of those is in an, in a boring office job and they want to become a superhero or something and then there's like some other person who has this other thing yeah yeah i really yeah it's not very like i don't remember much but yeah like what 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 the game's major appeal comes from is that you your mind tends to form connections with the the blocks because of the narrative but what's actually going on is just a simple platforming thing like really bare bones platforming stuff yeah it's very very uh, simple platforming stuff and each of them has a uh, a unique ability that helps them navigate through a level yeah and it's what sort of uh, unique abilities do they have there is a rectangle that is like there is a long rectangle which is flat which is flat uh, which is parallel to the ground that if if a piece uh, jumps on that rectangle they bounce uh, it's like so a thing yeah. it's yeah. the that that rectangle, so that rectangle is, yeah so that rectangle itself can jump very high but it can help others jump very high yeah so the the story is also something like that right that this is a person who try like likes to help others and stuff Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Each of their characters is different. Like, I mean, the the rectangle, uh, the the rectangle that is parallel to the ground. She's a like it's it's a female character, and like her opening description is kind of it's kind of funny, kind of like weird at the same time. Uh, she had had others jump on top of her before, and uh, whenever she turned her back, they'd be gone. Like that is that is the line I think that is used to. Describe so the Koopa from Mario. Like literally, that's that what it. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> the Koopa. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. If that's uh, the yeah, twist, there were, that, 
there's there's one block which can float right yeah 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 she's the superhero right like because uh, oh right that's the superhero right yeah she's the superhero because she, water doesn't kill her and uh, okay i think the spikes are her kryptonite that's what she decides that some some stuff like that it's it's interesting and like i will give that game credit it is interesting Uh, yeah it but, makes you chuckle like uh, like i enjoyed the time i spent with it definitely and it makes you laugh i guess like the the word to describe the game would be cute though i guess it sound kind of sounds like i'm damning it with faint praise like, <laughs> it is it's a cute game yeah it is a competent game it is a competent platformer with like a narrative that depends way too much on its story for like for it to be something that i keep coming back to yeah that being said like in terms of uh, like doing more with less like this this game is emblematic of doing more with less yeah there's absolutely nothing and uh they they're still able to make it a relatively interesting platformer they're still able yeah. to make it a relatively semi interesting narrative for me at least uh yeah yeah that's definitely it because uh like if you like what what's good about this game is game's design is that you can take anything away from it and the game would be lesser for it like absolutely everything plays a, a an important part yeah like in it yeah i agree so yeah like it's a it's an enjoyable game you check it out it, it usually yeah, like like it will probably be on sale for like 1 or 2 dollars soon so yeah, yeah. it was free of free on psn as well ps plus oh okay oh that's cool i don't know how those deals work i think they get a lump sum for putting it free for a while yeah i, I don't know nobody is telling i guess i yeah. just know that it's actually a lot of fun <laughs> getting free mm-hmm. games <laughs> so basically nintendo's attitude about uh, like youtube videos is 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 kind of old fashioned i guess that's the most uh like delightful way i can put it is that they are <laughs> it's it's similar to their attitudes about online play like it's it's like this antic yeah it's it, yeah. something of the like 10 years ago this policy would have been raised a few eyebrows now it's it's suicidal yeah uh, so nintendo are basically uh taking down any uh Did they were taking down any videos? By the way, do, will how do you get taken down if you say Nintendo? Like I'm not sure. No, no, no. It's not that. Like <laughs> Nintendo. Okay. What is it? That was a joke. I just that was a joke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Nintendo for any video that that was uh, trying to monetize a Nintendo game, what they were doing was they would take the money. They would pocket the cash. And this new arrangement basically sets up. it is actually an improvement over the old arrangement whereas the new the new arrangement is an affiliates program wherein people who want to uh, like make videos for nintendo uh, and monetize them have to apply to nintendo and uh, if nintendo uh, like allows the content to go online there like there will be a three way split of whatever money comes in nintendo takes a chunk the creator takes a chunk and uh, google takes a chunk now obviously for a lot of reasons this is problematic uh you don't want if you're making a video criticizing a game you don't want approval from the person who's who stands to make money from your video like you know you don't yeah, you don't want yeah. the person who stands to make money it's, from it's the a, game it's giving you permission yeah. to put video up yeah it's a backward system it would be like if if to release a film critic critic you know you would need permission from the house who's making the film like it's a completely backward system yeah exactly i mean uh, yeah. i mean if if somebody you know just records what their play play rules and puts it online do they have to pay nintendo for that yeah. video this was really funny uh, no they don't have to pay it, but this was really funny because there was a time where like the new mario kart it has an integrated upload to youtube feature but but uh, nintendo was actually taking down the videos that people were uploading to youtube using <laughs> mario kart 8 because of its policy so that was weird for a while yeah i'm not sure yeah. if they have changed that or not but, but i think it was really hilarious yeah. yeah i think nintendo's problem even with this 
like yeah the policy is hugely problematic but even here the huge problem is like nintendo's communication is has not been like it's not at the level that you would expect them to have it at especially considering that financially they're not doing that well right now 3ds is doing well but the wii u which is like which needs to to have turned around by now has not and that's mm. like that's that's put them in a bad financial situation they need to communicate better if they want people to get on side and start buying their device like ironically if you look at it right now all three next gen consoles wii u probably has the best library and they're still not able to sell it which which says a lot about their ability to communicate clearly uh, yeah i guess this is a kind of uh, like it it almost feels like the marketing arm of the company like the game design arm of the company feels like it's ahead of the world for has been ahead of the world by 10 years and the marketing arm of the company feels like it's be, it's compensating by being behind 10 years yeah like the, mar- the marketing arm seems like it's stuck in the 1970s and the 1980s like when nintendo was the next big thing and they could do anything and no one could say anything about it like the marketing arm feels like it is stuck in very old traditional ways whereas the game design arm has been consistently evolving and that's because they have some really brilliant people working in their game design section like least of which is like not least of which is shigeru miyamoto uh and there are yeah. many other great work there uh, so yeah i mean it it feels weird on because i guess a, like a part of me believes that nintendo can bounce back from pretty much anything because like they have they have been here before yes yeah, but, yeah but it's just uh i mean it's not the worst thing that they are kind of doing this thing with youtube but yeah it feels I mean if the it was the other company I would just not bother but like since it's Nintendo and a lot of people like when I was a kid I was playing Mario and like all all the games they made so that's why I guess like they have like I kind of sort of care more about where they end up compared to like your typical video game company Same but yeah here. in the end yeah I haven't really like due to Nintendo's own policies ironically that I haven't really played any modern Nintendo game slowly my, yeah the memories are kind of fading <laughs> i guess i mean my my roommate had a wii so i have played uh, i have played the uh, the i have played twilight princess and i have played yeah. a bunch of modern nintendo games and the magic is still there there's no doubt about the fact that in terms of game design nintendo is doing some amazing things mario galaxy is a pretty magical freaking experience uh and if i have mentioned pokemon maybe tejas will come out of his ftl trance for 5 seconds <laughs> you guys have been covering the uh, thing for a while so i'm like all right keep going keep on pokemon tejas talk about your your pokemon dependency issue the dependency <laughs> issue no i i just say that it's such a good game that it just begs to be played which one uh, which one or like pokemon any like one? the fuck does it does it matter like all of them are brilliant oh like are all and of them the, the same or like all of them are brilliant like what's the... No, they all have the you know like uh, over the years they've added more mechanics to how you know how the basic formula works. They've um, had like um, yeah, okay, the, you know like just in general set of improvements. They had emotions, each, yeah, yeah. emotion. Yeah, and then each new one comes <laughs> up with uh, you know 150 new Pokemon. So there's always that you know thing to look forward to is like okay, what's new this time? So yeah there's a lot actually <laughs> and uh, they're releasing two new versions uh in a few months uh that are kind of remakes but generally whenever they do a remake they add a whole buttload of new mechanics anyway so works out so those uh they're remakes of uh, ruby and sapphire versions so looking for I mean, that okay because red and blue okay yeah yes uh, yeah i always do it sense Yeah, black and white, red, like ruby sapphires, generally stuff like that. Uh, mm. So, but I mean, I don't know. Like in terms of childhood memories, uh, especially related to gaming, I think Nintendo figures pretty prominently for almost all of us, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, I guess I my so- most uh, like it's it's sort of second to me because the Prince of Persia franchise is more dear to me. But yeah, a close second. Definitely. Okay, P- Prince of Persia. All right. Uh, from yeah, me. The Sands of Time trilogy. Yeah. 
oh, okay, okay, the sands of time trilogy. Wow, that's late. Uh, for me, it's still uh, it's still Mario and uh, and Street Fighter Two. Mario, Street Fighter Two, and uh, this this there's a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game called Turtles in Time. Uh, that uh, that are my what, like. Was that the two dimensional brawler thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a two dimensional yeah, brawler. Yeah, I played that. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> That, that is, is it the one with my... the shredder and there's one stage where like the city is in the sky and the city keeps falling if you step on it too much like uh, is that the one no 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 like shredder yeah. there is a shredder fight but it's not like that okay okay yeah then then it must be something else like i played are... double dragon like double dragon 3 and double dragon 2 and yeah those those two games are pretty awesome And then there was the Chip and Dale game. You guys played the Chip and Dale game, right? No. <laughs> Rescue Rangers. I, Rescue Rangers. Chip. Chi- I remember. Like, I remember yeah, the like cartoon. It, it's even the. Th- I remember the cartoon fondly. Th- oh, it it I, was an I, awesome game. Like uh, me and my brother, like finished it in one sitting. Like Chip and Dale, it was awesome. Like Rescue Rangers, Chip 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 and Dale, something like that. They even had a MIDI yeah. song tune like that. It was wow. it was pretty great. Yeah. So, yeah. Has everyone played <laughs> the Home Alone game? The Home Alone games, rather. Alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a Home Alone series. Home Alone of game. Platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a Home Alone series of platforming games, dude. My God, was it rated R for like the violence that the kid inflicts on those two helpless <laughs> no. robbers? <laughs> no, it's not. My God, like I have not watched Home Alone in years, and that used to be the film I used to watch again and again as a kid. Yeah, it's the film that yeah. they show used to show almost once a day on like our movie channels for a while. Oh, I remember loving the shit out of that movie, and I don't think I could watch like sit through the whole thing now. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> I I really don't think any of us could. It's got very like I don't know. It's good movie. It's just not the sort of thing that we're you know that would. Yeah, so you have to be of anyway. a certain kind of age uh, to uh, appreciate to, to yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. I think yeah, more than the age, a certain type of. Uh, I think it's more of a certain type of mentality, which is very nineties. Very yeah, nineties, very nineties, very young. Uh, both of those yeah. things. And I was uh, yeah. The the thing that I remembered remember now was that there was this in Home Alone one there was the scene where the whole family is late, so they skip the airport security and just get them <laughs> in the plane. I was thinking, wow, that those were the days, right? Oh man, <laughs> yeah. Those oh, were the days. Oh yeah. God, God, yeah. <laughs> George freaking yeah. Eaton. <laughs> yeah. So. So anyway, yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess there's not really much to say beyond that because, I mean, you can't really comment on a YouTube policy like this, like. I mean, yeah, I guess I like I can tell whether yeah. uh, they like wh- whether they they change it. I'm guessing they're gonna have to change it eventually. Uh, yeah. That being said, Nintendo uh, really needs to work on messaging. I mean, th- that's the only thing that will get the Wii U out of the current predicament that it's in. Uh, yeah, that's about it, really. I mean, I don't know if there's anything more to say on this subject. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so at this point, really, uh, like. Like I don't even I'm not even sure if something can be done because the popular narrative has been set for the Wii U, and that it's a console in trouble. Nintendo do this, Nintendo that, blah blah blah. I don't know so, about that. I mean, you remember last generation yeah. PlayStation Three had that narrative about it, you know, and they bounced back pretty decently. By the end of its, uh, by the end of its run, PlayStation Three had become like a profit-making console for Sony. I mean, that was yeah. I mean, that was just like the initial. Uh, trough was pretty much just because Rage Racer hasn't been released on PlayStation <laughs> yet. It's not. It wasn't that. It, that the initial problem was was because <laughs> all their their big uh, their headline titles were bad. Like they started off with Lair, they started off with Heavenly Sword, and Heavenly yeah. like both those games were not what they were projecting them to be. Heavenly Sword was a God of War replacement, and like it did yeah. not capture people's imagination in the way. I actually, of- yeah, I actually played Heavenly Sword. Like when I was in college, like we had this uh, kind of cafe thing where you had Xboxes, and yeah, like it felt like a by the numbers God of War clone thing. Like yeah. It didn't really feel like it was a jump forward or anything. Yeah, it has felt like every other Ninja Theory game since then. 
to me. Uh, I played yeah. Heaven Sword and I have played uh, Enslaved uh, Journey to the West and I, I think they have the Devil May Cry game. I played that yeah, can as we, well. Can we talk about Enslaved for a bit actually? Because I played it and I quit in frustration. So It's really? such a shit game. Yeah. I actually was pretty uh, like hyped when I bought it. But then like they at, at times they have such bad encounter design like just Oh, After God. like That's an hour at the start, there is yeah. a landmine filled area which you have to navigate. And by God, if you like one step to the to the right or left of the intended path, and it's insta death, and you restart again. But and I like thought that, we left that in the 90s, but apparently not. That is not even the part that like bugs me. The part that bugs me is that Enslaved is based on a fantastic Chinese like mythology yes, fantasy yes. story, like Journey to the West is equivalent to China's Mahabharata or Ramayana. It is one of their great all-time stories. And it is like, they freaking took that and they set it in the United States. Made every character freaking American. And yeah. it, it, they made it, they did not do that story justice. Yeah, it, I mean, like, it's pretty much like, if, if it would have not been, uh, like, if it would not have been named Journey to the West or something. It has, uh, it like, yeah. like, I mean, uh, you new have IP. to tell me that it was based on that because, yeah. Like, fine, calling a character pig and calling a character monkey does not make your game akin to, like, that story. <laughs> like, having the same name for the characters doesn't doesn't do anything for me, man. I mean, like, yeah, you can yeah. say that, the, like, allegorically, the situations that they fall into are the same, but Journey to the West is this amazing, epic story, and Enslaved is not. It is a boring story. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like the environment and the art design, I guess. But yeah, apart from that, the the gameplay wasn't anything special. And and like we said, there are a few very uh, like especially infuriating encounters, like <laughs> stuff which stuff which like you really think no game studio would do in this decade. But like somehow they managed to like do that. Yeah. Uh, like there are a few collectibles. Like, which you, if you try to take those collectibles, like, it turns out you are in the line of fire of, like, ultra mega death robot, and it kills you instantly. And then, like, if you, and then there's some point where if you try to explore, I think, like, you, like, you die because you're too far. Like, she just mind kills you or something, like. Yeah, I, yeah, I am not over fond of the mechanics of that game. I am not over fond of the narrative of that game. I still finish that game. I don't know what that yeah. says about me. That other than that, I'm a masochist. But I did not yeah. come out of that game feeling like it. Like I bought that game because I was like, "Hey, Journey to the West." I've read that. I've read that book. It's an amazing mythological epic. They're like that great source material. How can they go wrong? And I found out exactly. What <laughs> yeah. If there's one thing which you need to learn about the game industry is that they will always surprise you in the ways they will get it wrong. <laughs> And and what about uh, the ending? Because I actually once I like quit halfway or something through, I googled uh, like the playthrough. There's actually a great YouTube channel which what it does is it 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 tastefully combines the gameplay and cutscenes into a, a a short length movie. So there so there was this great enslaved video in 30 minutes, which like was a short movie of the thing. So so yeah, I I and I felt really meh by the ending like. Yeah, it didn't make sense was, to me. Like there was yeah. something going on, and you remember, like whatever. There are photographs yeah. about New York, whatever. I I did not give a shit yeah. by the end what was like, going on there. I mean, I get that monkey was having visions, but how does that relate to what happened at the end? Like at the end was just some Matrix type, like uh, the choice, like the because it's actually it's, made for you. But it was like, do you let people uh, be deluded, or do you awake them to the truth, or something? But the problem but, I had with that ending was. Yeah. It is a classic case of a developer being a little bit, uh, having a little bit of hubris and thinking our game, the story is so good that people are definitely going to want to come back for more. So let's have this open-ended, mm. slightly ambiguous ending that we can explain later. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah, it sort of feels like, yeah, like it, it almost feels like they were kind of in the franchise mood, you know, where like the first game is just the start of this of big this, thing. Yeah, and the, the, the biggest problem I have with that game is that it doesn't ever feel like a real journey. It doesn't feel like that you're traveling. 
Like yes, he's on a goddamn yeah. bike or whatever, but it does not feel like you're actually going to interesting places because none nothing that they see is alive. It's all freaking yeah. landscape that's already dead. Hey, and most I, of the travel happens in cutscenes anyway. So I mean, yeah. which is I don't know. Man. I mean, it's called Journey to the <laughs> West. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's just yeah. I just sort of remembered it, but yeah, like I have the same kind of thing where. Where it's this thing where there's the interesting concept, but then like you just kind of a test fallen because they, like, because on one hand you expected a lot more, so yeah, like it's just yeah. Uh, they just has not played the new DMC, right? No, I I played like a demo of it, and well, the problem with playing the demo yeah. is that you don't really understand uh, the full like you yeah. you haven't had time to learn all the buttons. So it took a while just to get used to that, but it was fun. I mean, it was. I didn't have that, that many. It was DMC is the first. I, DMC is the first Ninja Theory game I played that is. That's playable beginning to end, and game because gameplay wise, it is. Uh, it is pretty much a like it is a Devil May Cry game. Uh, narrative wise, it was a little bit insufferable, but whatever, fine. There's some great level design in there. There's some good combat encounters. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah, my experience with uh, like DMC is very uh, interesting because when I, when it when the first reveal trailer came out, I was like, oh my god, what the hell did they do? Why did they make Dante this uh, like goth kind of <laughs> character and and like why did they wears the white hair and like all of that? Like I was the typical DMC fanboy who was upset, but then like I guess I played it and like I sort of just like how. uh like i like how b movie it feels you know it just feels it's yeah, yeah, completely yeah. unapologetic and yeah like, like i was one of those people who never played dmc for the gameplay i was all about the insane plot like i loved the plot of dmc 3 just because how like Bad outlandish shit, and just... crazy it was yeah yeah it was like every cut scene would just uh like make you go what they did that there's no way they're going to do that and then the guy just does that So, like that cut scene where Dante just drives the bike over the thing. Oh, oh that is so good. Dante is a freaking Rajnikanth of video games. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, on one hand, like the back of my mind was saying, if you could drive that fucking bike, why didn't you just fucking run up the the tower instead of making me play through all of these stages? But on the other hand, the kind of just the insanity of what's on display. Yeah. Completely. Like the only thing yeah. that even comes close to rivaling Devil May Cry is Bayonetta in terms of just the insanity of what is on display. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I kind of yeah. Like if Bayonetta was on PC, then I would be able to play it sadly. But but yeah, yeah that's so so yeah. The new DMC kind of won won me over because of just how like unapologetic it was. It was like like how Dante is to the world inside DMC. It was like that, but to the world. So yeah, I guess I I liked it like. I actually like. I actually enjoyed like how the developers were basically giving the fans the middle finger, and they were like, "Yeah, like remember there's this this part where uh, a mob yeah, yeah. falls at Dante's head." He's and I mean, that is so contrived. Yeah, <laughs> that is so contrived. Like, I mean, I was like, the, the mob was there, and I was like, "There's no way this is gonna happen. Like, it just can't happen." But then it did, and my God, yeah, it, it just made me laugh at just how. I just how shamefully like the developers were just giving everyone the middle finger. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Like I mean, they're pretty. Yeah, I think you uh, enjoy yeah. developers giving players middle fingers a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. There's a, the, the that part. I guess yeah. <laughs> is this like a is this a kind of a harbinger of what we can expect with unrest? Yeah. Just like you know, <laughs> yeah, you begin I, the game and the UI is like, hey. If you click this special shiny button here, you <laughs> click it, middle finger. That's it. Just a picture of Arvind yeah, with flipping off. What I will know, say is that there, uh, yeah, the unrest will not exactly like what you're probably expecting. Unrest is not that. Like it's probably something else. So yeah, but yeah, not exactly like it's not that middle finger to the playery that Devil May Cry, the reboot is like. Well, how do you even? Yeah, that's one problem which I have though. Like, what do you even call that? Like, do I call it DMC Devil May Cry? But that just like feels. so weird <laughs> but yeah like i like new dante yeah he's he's he has the attitude to like be dante basically so yeah like ultimately it's the attitude that come like color your hair like bright orange for all i care like 
if you like have the ki same kind of attitude you you are basically dante so though i did not like the whole like what was that like anti corporate thing plot i mean like i love hating on corporations more than most people but like that plot what the hell was that that was pretty much you know very obvious sort of analogy they didn't really i don't think they wanted at any point to be like hey we're going to be really subtle about this <laughs> yeah no i mean they did like i think it find in that yeah. plot at all considering that there are basically characters who are lifted from fox news yeah that. like that guy yeah <laughs> uh, yeah do i do like the visual design part of the, like levels like those where it's like information and it's also like very funny because it's one of those things where it's sort of in there was that movie if you remember like but you probably don't because it was some obscure russian movie where like where if you where uh, the hero can see what the the advertisers do so for example the coca cola advertisement is literally like throwing some like waves that it's very dmc ish yeah, you know you know Yeah, I remember this. I haven't seen it, but I do remember the trailers for what you're talking about. You see yeah, these you weird monsters. Yeah, you saw the movie Bob. Yeah, you saw the movie Bob review probably of this movie. Uh, don't so remember, but I remember the trailer. But it was uh, yeah, yeah, it was basically crazy, you know, um, kind of absurdish monsters. Like, well, not absurd, but like outlandish. And yeah, it, it was. interesting i guess yeah i think like stuff like that works uh fairly if you uh, keep it to a minimum because but yeah i guess it's sort of yeah i mean i guess i'm not over like too sold on that metaphor but yeah it's an interesting visual concept yeah that's for sure but hmm. yeah apart from that yeah and i mean yeah so ultimately yeah i like the new dmc i guess because i i was never in it for the combat though those enemies which are which only uh like die if you do the certain attacks yeah those are dumb yeah don't do that please <laughs> and all that accurately sums up how we feel about nintendo's new youtube affiliate program uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh yeah. I, no it's awesome uh I, you guys want to call it here yeah yeah i sure. think we should yeah, that's sure. So this was the Dead Horse podcast for this week. Bye. Yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. All right. We're not even going to wait for a proper goodbye. I mean, just screw it. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> yeah, bye. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't play by your rules. Yeah. <laughs>